Hey everybody, I wanted to talk more about bike fitting and fitting in general. I got my, well, first of all, I think that a bike fit is the most important thing that you can do um, to enjoy cycling. And I've been riding a bike um, pretty routinely since about 1993. And I've been through a lot in those years in terms of the fit on the bike and I got my first real bike fit by a guy named Andy Pruitt in at the Boulder Center for Sports Medicine in Boulder, Colorado and he was one of the uh, original developers of body geometry for Specialized and uh, since then I've had a lot of different fits from many different people and I have probably been um, on the wrong fit for a lot of those years and I'll explain why in, in, in a minute but <clears throat> I think if anybody spends a, a decent amount of time on a road bike you definitely should get a professional fit and really I think that you should get one by more than just one fitter and you know getting a bike fit is kind of like going to a doctor or a dentist or something like that you really have a big variance between you can have a big variance between how good a fit is from one person to the next and I think that you should spend the money and, and take the time to get to someone who knows a lot about riding and um, biomechanics and who has a lot of experience because you can have a good bit of difference between one fitter to the next and to give you an example of a good experience I got a retool fit uh, from Matt Blevins years ago in Huntsville, Alabama, and then probably three years later, I got another retool fit by a fitter in Costa Rica, and some of their numbers were were exactly the same, and the saddle height was exactly the same, and the setback was fairly close, and um, you know. A lot of people don't get a fit because they think it's a waste of time and they think that they can feel what their body's doing and imagine how they look on the bike. And I've done it that way myself. And I end, I end up a pretty good ways off from where a fitter always puts me. Um, normally I end up with a saddle that's about a centimeter lower than where a fitter puts me. And, you know, you can think that you feel good and you can think that you're in a good position, but your body has a, has an ability to adapt really well to things that are wrong. And you can, you can be putting your body in, uh, an inefficient position or a position that's going to uh, cause you injuries or problems or just you're not going to be able to put out as much power but you're going to think that it feels good or feels right and that's because you've ridden so much time in it that it does feel right but when you go and you get a fit then you the first ride on the new fit and you're like I can't I can't adapt to this or I can't even I'm not going to be able to ride this and a lot of times what I would do is I would immediately change it like towards what I had but uh, closer to what the fit was and I would never really get back to exactly where the fit was and I think that was wrong and I think that was because I wouldn't spend enough time letting my body adapt to the fit that they put me on. 
And I've gotten better at that um, the older I've gotten and just put the miles in on the fit before um, I said, okay, this is, the fit is not right and I need to see somebody else or redo it. And, you know, part of the reason people get away from their fits is they get a different bike or they get a different saddle and then everything changes. And I, I tried to explain how to maintain that position from the part one fit, uh, part one uh, saddle selection video I made. And really, if you can replicate the position of the saddle exactly over the bottom bracket, it makes it so much easier to replicate your fit from bike to bike. And you can use that method that I put on the video and you can get it there exactly. And after that, you just set the front end of the bike, which is way easier because then you can reference everything to where the saddle is basically and get it right. But, um, you know, a fit, I wanted to explain this, like if you imagine there's a circle around the saddle and then there's a circle around somewhere where you're going to be putting your hands most of the time on the bars, that's like a zone of adaptability where you, your body can ride in many different fits and get away with it. And it's kind of like this circle, like the saddle could be this high or this low or this forward or this aft, and you're gonna generally be okay, but it's almost like there's a bullseye in the center of that circle. And the closer you can get to that bullseye, that's like the perfect setup for your body. And the same is true on the front of the bike. The front of the bike, you have a little bit more, um, um, cushion in terms of what you can get away with because you don't have the repetition of your legs and, and you know 90 RPMs multiplied by hours and hours your hands are pretty much just sit, sitting in the same position but uh, one thing that can get you in trouble is you can use the saddle to fix problems that are happening in the front of the bike at the bars and or you can use the bars to fix a problem that is from the saddle being in the wrong position so like things that are super critical to your fit or just something as simple as the angle of the hoods if you if you angle your hoods up say five or 10 degrees more, you're effectively shortening your reach by several millimeters in terms of where your hands are in relation to your shoulders and vice versa when you drop your hoods. And those kind of changes can make you feel like your saddle's not in the right place when it really has nothing to do with your saddle. It has to do with where you need to be set up on the bars or if the stem is too long or if the reach is too too far um, with the bar or the if the if the stem is too long an easy way to fix it is just go more more forward on, with the saddle but if your saddle was in the right position why would you fix it by why would you fix your reach problem by changing your saddle position you need a different stem but you have to you have to know that you have to know my saddle is in the right place and if you don't go and get a fit then you don't really truly know that it's in the right place and once it is then you can leave it alone and fix issues with how your arms feel or your neck feels or your back truly by changing just the front of the bike and um, so yeah, there, there is that. Then, then there is like issues with your cleat setup and your crank length and <clears throat> your um, cleat position and all that. I, for example, have my right femur is um, five millimeters longer than the left femur and the right tibia 
is three millimeters longer than the left tibia and then there's like that's what uh eight millimeters and then there's two millimeters somewhere in there with for a total of one centimeter difference on the right versus the left leg so you know everybody probably has asymmetries asymmetries on uh, in their right and left leg and in a perfect world your legs would be exactly the same length because you're putting yourself on this fixed machine and your body is not perfectly symmetrical so if you're putting your knees and hips through thousands of these cycles and those asymmetries get compounded the more you ride and if you don't compensate for them somehow your body's going to find a way to compensate and that may or may not cause you injuries and i got my my the bones in my legs measured when i was around 20 years old or so because i was having some issues with my knees and uh, mainly with my knees and when you go to a physical therapist most of the time when you start saying I have a, a leg leg discrepancy, they'll try and they'll lean towards, oh, well, it's a, it's some kind of functional discrepancy and it's because of a tightness in your, um, your hips or your back or something that's causing your, um, causing a theoretically difference in leg length. So if you don't get it measured under x-ray, then you don't ever really know if it is a, a difference or not. So when you have a difference in uh, femur length, you have a, a, a like a rotational issue on the bike because as if, if this femur is longer, then it's going to be further over the pedal spindle than this one. And to make those two the same, my hips are gonna to have to rotate uh, on the saddle to try and kind of even it up. Or if, you're, if, you're t if your tibia is a different length, it's gonna make the um, deflection of your knee different at the top of the stroke. Like if this tibia is longer, then this angle right here is going to, going to be more flexed and put my knee under more flexion than this one because this one is shorter so it's going to drop my knee down and then if this if this uh femur is longer it's going to put my knee out over the pedal spindle more than this one and then really just if this leg overall is longer then at the bottom of the stroke I'm going to have more of an angle in my knee than this side. And that's something that retool fitters and a, a, any kind of fitter can make the mistake if they're not paying attention. They can set up your saddle height and your fore and aft position off of one side. And if you have a big leg length discrepancy, like for example, if a fitter fits me to just my right leg, my, my saddle will be too high for me to ride because my left leg won't be able to compensate enough for me to be able to ride it. I will end up choking up on the saddle and riding more on the rivet to effectively shorten my saddle height. Anytime you go forward on the saddle, you're shortening the effective saddle height or vice versa when you come back on the saddle. And so I've done a lot of stuff in my lifetime to try and um, compensate for that. I actually rode a longer crank arm on the left, on the short leg side. I bought back when you, um, back when Shimano was like, the bottom bracket was, was um, dual sided and you could change out crank arms. I had a, long, a longer crank arm on the left. I changed the position of the cleat in the shoe, like to make if you if you bring the cleat back on the shoe, 
that effectively makes the saddle height longer or if you bring the cleat forward on the shoe you um, make the saddle height shorter because you're bringing your foot closer to your body and I've like made those opposites on each side um, I've used different shim thicknesses under the cleats and you can kind of really get lost in all those things trying to compensate for an issue and what I ended up settling in on was a was a shim on the left short leg of about three millimeters and you can never shim the full amount because um, it's just, well, like me, at one centimeter, you, you can't get away with putting a one centimeter um, shim in your shoe. It's just too much. It's not going to work. So that's something th to think about if you suffer from knee problems. Like I had uh, degenerative um, arthritis in my left pat patella. And that was because of a, a patella tracking problem. And it could have been due to this being the short leg and compensations that I made, but I was able to actually fix that problem by getting stem cell injections from Regenex into the left knee, like a series of maybe three injections where they um, take bone marrow from the iliac crest in the back, in your low back, in your hip from your hip bone they suck the bone marrow out of your hip and then mix it in with your uh, flat platelets from your blood and re-inject it into wherever you have cartilage or ligament damage and really I've had no knee pain um, for a couple of years now from getting those injections so I did do some damage but um, that was really the only way I could find to fix it. The only, the, an orthopedic surgeon would have tried to uh, melt away like cartilage and smooth up the subpatellar cartilage and that theoretically is just taking more cartilage away and not really the way to fix it. So, but when it comes to your cleat setup, your, your cleat setup is to me just as important as your um, saddle set up and the two can be affected by one millimeter one way or the other and it can cause you problems like just recently i put in a specialized body geometry four foot shim into um under my footbeds to shim up the outside of my feet by one and a half degrees and it made me feel better. It made my knee more comfortable. So I think that really when it comes to fit, you have to be willing to try a lot of stuff. Like, okay, you have to be willing to go and try and get fit. You have to try another fitter and you have to compare the two. You have to be willing to try their fit and not change it and ride it for a long time. And then whatever doesn't feel right from there, you have to start trying new stuff and playing with it. And it's going to change throughout the years as to what you feel best at, depending on how your body changes. And like you need to have Allen wrenches with you when you ride and you need to be willing to, to try something on a ride and ride it for the next hour. And did that feel better or worse than, than um, where you were. And then you need to continually take into account if the fit that the professional gave you was your home position, how far, when you go and you make changes on your own, how far are you getting away from that home position? And you need to have the home position recorded. And as you make changes, it can the home is like a place you can go back to to reset everything and see how it feels because you constantly are having to compare how the change feels to how it felt before so that you can get it exactly right. And it, it can take years and thousands of miles, but I think that it's the most important thing that you can do for your cycling um, hobby or whatever 
I mean, it's more important than the training itself. If the fit is wrong, it doesn't matter how many hours you put on the bike. Um, if the fit is wrong, you're just going to end up hurt or not able to produce the power that you should be able to produce because it's not right. So that's about it, I guess. I mean, there's a lot more to it, but that's the gist of the fitting, my kind of fitting philosophy, I guess you'd say.